Welcome ladies and gentlemen, today I have a keyboard that we're gonna look over because this is not just your standard everyday keyboard. This is a budget keyboard that's just come on the market. It's in Kickstarter at the moment. I think by the time this video comes out, it will be in production because they've had well over the pledge that they were going for. So this will be out very soon. And if you don't know what this is, this is the Drunk Deer G60 Magnetic Keyboard with rapid trigger, turbo mode, and adjustable keystrokes. So that basically means that I can have this set to 0.1 millimeter of a touch. That means just brushing over this thing will set the key off. And with it having rapid trigger as well, this is the perfect eSports keyboard because as soon as you release the key, no matter where you've pushed it down to, it resets so you can tap it again for that smoothness of counter strafing, jumping, and all of the above. Now let's move over to the other camera so you can see a top down view of this keyboard and we're gonna open it up and look over some of the basics. Okay, so while we're now over on this camera here, I've just plugged it in so you can see the brightness of the RGB backlit keyboard. Now it does have multiple functions, we'll get into that. It is all online base, so we'll move over soon to the computer and show you some of that stuff. We're just gonna go over like the build quality and why this is such a budget keyboard, even though it has some of the highest tech some keyboards out there have. Obviously, everyone knows of the Wooten 60HE. That was the main keyboard that started this whole magnetic key accuration points and all of that jazz in the gaming industry. And then Drunk Deer came along and made a budget version that is viable for anyone that is on a low income because I've wanted the Wooten for a long enough time and never been able to get my hands on it because one, they're always sold out or two, they're just really expensive. Yet this comes in around about, I believe, 60 pounds, 80 pounds, whatever it was on the Kickstarter. But once it is fully released, I will have a link to the website that you can go and check this out for yourself anyway. But we're gonna move on to getting this undone and go over some of the build quality. Lighting a bit better there for you. So obviously the case is fully plastic, so it does have that cheapness to it. It does feel lightweight, but that's a good thing when you wanna take this out and it's a sleeper build, that's what this is. You wanna take this to a friend's house and be like, oh, I'll play some CSGO, I'll play some Fortnite, I'll play some whatever. You know, I've brought my keyboard, it's fine. And they don't understand the power that this holds, okay? As I said, it is plastic, so it does have a slight bit of, of bend in there. Not too much, not crazy like some plastic keyboards do. Now, there is one thing that I do not like is the fact they don't have adjustable feet because I'm so used to having the feet that flip out in like two different stages. But these also have a spring mechanism, if you can see that there. It's got this weird spring feature that gives it a bit of bounce when you're playing. You know, when you, when you type in experience or just playing, you can see there's a good bit of, of bounce back there. So I wanna try and fix that. I'm gonna do two mods today as well. I'm gonna do the tape mod and also try and add some of my own foam. And now this is quite thick foam, so whether this actually fits in or not, I don't know yet, but I'm definitely gonna do the tape mod as well. But we're gonna open this up and have a look inside. First off by taking all the keys off. So let's get into doing that. So as you can see, I've taken it all apart. The keycaps for the most part have this nice sort of texture on them and the, the text is nicely printed on there, it's bold. I think the texture makes them feel cheaper than they are. Now, I believe they are double shock PBT, but still, I, there's just this, this weird flimsiness feel to them, even though they're not flimsy, they are well built. It's just, I think the texture that they've gone for with this sort of matte finish gives it a cheaper feel. Now, as you can see, I've taken this all into sections. So you start with the keycaps, you then go to the plate itself. It is an aluminium plate, which is nice. It does have gasket mounted spacebar stabilizers, but unfortunately the rest of the stabilizers are all ungasket mounted, which is unfortunate. So it has this nice rubber or silicon insert in the middle here between the base and the actual plate itself. Uh, and then you have the board all put together. Now, I've seen some people do the O-ring trick with the gaskets, but I mean, that's not really a point when you've only got the two bottom mounted gaskets there. Then underneath that, you do get your foam, which feels very cheap and rubbery. It doesn't feel like your standard board foam. I don't know what this is made out of, but I mean, it feels soft and comfy, but it's like a memory foam. So it doesn't give you much spring. You know, it feels like it would over time, like you feel the bubbles pop when you press it. So over time, I feel like that would get thinner after playing with such heavy fingers. But the case itself, I don't believe is a standard 60% case. So you couldn't swap this out to a aluminum case. Whether they're gonna bring an aluminum case out, I'm not sure. I don't know if I saw that or not on the, on the Kickstarter. Would be nice to have an alternative, I guess, because if this is a standard drunk deer case and not 
not able to sort of use it in other third party cases. That is unfortunate. But that's that's how companies keep you going back to them. So I respect the hustle. But anyway, what we're gonna do is take this and I'm gonna try and cut some of the foam to match this style of foam. And I'm gonna go with more of the thicker one here. I've got these two foams here. I've got this one that came from like packaging box somewhere. And I mean, it's thick, it's heavy duty. So whether this is gonna actually push the keyboard higher as well, I don't know, we'll have to see. Then there's also this flimsy one. I don't think it's gonna even touch the sides with that. So what we're gonna do is take this and place it over the top of here and just get a pencil or whatever tool you have and just sort of guide yourself around and then get a pair of scissors and cut it out into shape. So I'm gonna go do that and then we'll come back. So as you can see, we've got the rough shape sort of cut out there in the foam. All we're gonna do is go around with a pair of scissors and just sort of neaten it up. So I actually did do this on one of my Epo makers and it made it sound a bit more thicker. It didn't like give it such a spongy clacky noise. What this will do for this, I do not know. So do not hold me to this actually doing anything. Now I couldn't do the tape mod on the Epo maker because the base actually was the soldering. There was no sort of underlay already on there. So I didn't want to go and tape it and it, you know, cause issues down the line where this one is pretty much a flat surface. Hopefully should be a spitting image of that on top. As you can see there, that is pretty much spot on. As I mentioned before, you can see the bottom here is a very nice clean flush slate. Like the only cable in here would be the charger port here. I tape a couple of times just to give it a thickness. Apologies if I'm out of camera at all. But yeah, there's hardly any. With this lens, it zooms in quite a bit. So now that is taped up, we've got about two, two layers on each end. So that just makes it sound less hollow, I believe. You know, I'm not a massive keyboard modder. This is the first ever tape mod I've done. I've done the phone before, that's quite simple, but tape mods, never done this before. So this is all new to me. Your tape mod, done. Then all you do is get your case with all your foam and plop that back inside. Now, as you can see already, the foam is pushing the, the board out of the case. So hopefully when we screw this back in, it should, in fact, pull it back down into the case so it does stay nice and snug. Okay, so I think the foam that I used might just be enough. I might not need that one. So that one, I feel like it's pushing it too high up. So we're gonna try just with the foam that I created and see if that one sits any better. That second foam I was using was pushing it too high, also with the tape mod. So I've stuck with the, the foam that I created out of the thicker stuff here. So hopefully that will give it a better sound overall as well as stability. But that means I get rid of that memory foam sponge that they used in the first place and also get to keep the tape mod at the same time. Okay, you're probably thinking, change your clothes. What is this, an ad part? No, this is the rest of the video. I did record the rest of it, but in true Windows fashion, as I was transferring the files over to my PC, Windows decided to update and I lost, I lost the footage. So we're gonna continue from where we left off of the keycaps. They were now replaced back to the keyboard and unfortunately I've actually lost as well the sound footage of before and after doing the mod. There wasn't much difference anyway, so I'll do the sound test of what the keyboard sounds like now with the tape mod and the new foam. To be honest, it didn't really do a lot. I do have some custom keycaps coming on the way from, from Gobbin Tech Keys, which I have personally created myself and we'll whack them on and see if they sound any different. But that will be in another video for Gobbin keycaps because they're not here yet. But anyway, make a positive out of a negative. We're gonna move on now to the software and I've had a couple more hours of testing it and finding out what I can do with this. So it does give a more in-depth review to the software unlike it was before just me going over it for the first time with you. We're gonna go over to the PC and go through the software and show you what all the rapid trigger turbo mode and things like that do. So let's head over there and get onto the website. Okay, now we're over on the PC. What you wanna do is go into Google or you can go to the link in the description. It will take you directly to the website. But what you wanna do is type in Drunk Deer Software and go to the first link, which will be the Drunk Deer website that says customize your keyboard. Click onto this link and it will bring you to a page full of their drivers for the other keyboards that you can purchase from them, such as the A75 or the G65. Now with the G60, because it's only just come out of the Kickstarter, there isn't a driver for such keyboard as of yet, but there will be one coming hopefully in the near future, but you can still update the keyboard from the software online, which is called drunkdeer-alter.com. So once you've clicked the link, you'll be greeted with a connect your keyboard. All you have to do is click the button and 
and the keyboard that is connected through the USB will be paired on here just click connect and you'll be brought to the software itself now it does say get firmware up here which you can click but that will take you back to the drivers and that's what you need once they actually release the new updates for certain keyboards but for now you can do everything online which I think is super clean and super simple by having it on a website instead of external software that you need running in the background 24 7 with this you can have multiple profiles and it is linked to your keyboard so if you go around a friend's house and plug it in and go onto the website it will link it still to this keyboard it won't be you have to reset it every single time bonus I must admit so I've just noticed in the video at some point earlier on I said you can have it set to a 0.1 millimeter this is set to a 0.2 but you really wouldn't notice that much of a millimeter so I just wanted to change that to be more factual towards this keyboard just in case someone comes along saying you said 0.1 but it's 0.2 you're not going to notice but anywho now with the software you've got color performance and remap with color that allows you to obviously do the standard you've got different functions on the left side here so as you can see if I click it changes the light and style of the keyboard itself and I can choose always light light by press ripple spectrum and so forth now I have mine set to just a standard color which comes on as always light and then you can choose your color presets which I normally go for white and you can choose your brightness and the speed if you have a changing effect you can't unfortunately set certain keys to certain colors it is a full keyboard change now with performance this is where it's a bit more technical you can change certain keys as you wish to have a certain accuation point say if I wanted W A S and D to have a 0.2 I could set that while the rest of the board is set to two millimeters now I tend to have two profiles one for my typing experience and one for my gaming experience as you can see with my typing experience all the keys are set to two millimeters and all the keys on my gaming experience are set to 0.2 because when I find typing on this keyboard set to 0.2 it's too rapid I can't physically type that fast and I'm misclicking loads of buttons and it's just it's all over the place so it's nice to have the two profiles you have your turbo mode and your rapid trigger now what rapid trigger does is like all other keyboards that have this style switch in them it allows you to have an activation point so if I turn on keystrokes real quick and you can see on the as I let go it resets the key so I can literally rapid trigger the hell out of WASD really fast spacebar it will put every input that I literally just by strolling my fingers along the keys it picks up all these keystrokes and that's what it will do in game it would not matter how lightly you press any of these buttons it will do that input in the game now what's cool with that is the fact that say if I'm playing a racing game and I need to lightly let off the pedal I can use that as an accelerator and understand that the more I push down, the faster the car will go. That is a huge bonus when it comes to racing games. The fact that I can now choose lightly to turn the corner instead of it just full on turn every single time. Now with the turbo mode, it will improve the input lag. Even though I don't notice there's input lag on this, it will just slightly improve it to make it feel a bit more fluent when you're playing the game. Now, like I said, I don't feel it change anything really because the keys are so quick compared to your standard everyday mechanical keyboard. This to me is enough. I don't want any more turbo boosting on this. You can also set each key to have a different reset point as well. So if you'd like it to reset after a certain push and then let go, it can do that by setting the downstroke and upstroke. Now I keep it just standard because I feel like that's good enough. If I personally wanted to change it for any reason, I could easily come in here and do so, but I leave it mostly standard and just change the action point to whatever I need it to be. And I have rapid trigger on all my keys. I believe if you have the turbo mode on, it will get rid of your rapid trigger mode and also your enable keystrokes tracking. I don't understand the keystroke tracking as per se playing games. I don't know if it's just for multiple keys at the same time. So if anyone knows about this, let let me know in the comments because I'd love to learn a bit more. As I say, I've only had this keyboard a couple of days now and I'm still trying to learn all these different features about this. But moving on to the remap. Now, this is quite a cool feature that I can set any key on my keyboard to a certain button. So I went into the FN. Normally, I went into FN and holding FN and the letter M would normally be the delete button. But on this, it was completely different. I was able to set the FN2 buttons to FN and M to be able to delete. But you've got two settings. You've got FN and FN2. This allows you to do two different functions. So your number keys for FN would be F1, F2, F3, and so forth. And then in FN2, this allows your alphabet keys to be set to something that you wish to have as well. So light in effects, media control, and so on, which I think is super awesome because, because as this is a 60% keyboard, you don't have that numpad where Armour 3, if you've ever played it, you need the numpad for certain actions in helicopters and so forth. 
So it's nice to have the FN button to be able to have the numpad if needed. And then once you've made all your profiles that you want to, you just say save to keyboard and it will do exactly that. That will be your keyboard pretty much set. So that's the software overall. If you want to know any more about this or have a bit more of an in-depth talk with it, then definitely let me know in the comments and I can make another video just going a bit more in-depth with the software of setting up keys, tutorials on how to change whatever you want to change, I guess. It is very simplistic. You will learn it in no matter of seconds. But what you're really only using this for is to change the accuation points and that's about it. But now let's move back to the rest of the video. So it has been a couple of days since that last clip of using the software. I just wanted to get the overall experience of using this for a couple of days extra, just to have a feel around the software, learn about the keyboard and get a bit more experience using said keyboard with the magnetic switches. Now we're gonna go over some pros and cons. And as you can see, the office has changed as well since then, that will be coming shortly. But we're gonna get into some pros and cons. To be honest, there's not that many cons anyway. I'm not keen on the spring feet. That's just a personal preference. I like to keep my setup looking clean and white. So I have this set to a standard white static color, but with the caps lock, and if you know me, I need to know when caps lock is on. When you click the caps lock, unfortunately the color doesn't change. It doesn't let you know. There's no signal on here to say caps lock's on. So when I'm playing a game or if I'm about to type, I need to know if caps lock is set on or off. I can fix that by just changing the colorway, but then that doesn't fit the aesthetic of my setup. So it's a bit hit and miss with that one. Could be another con for me personally. I think the last con overall would just be the fact that this case is set to Drunk Deer's own cases. You cannot switch this out for a third party 60% keyboard case because it would be nice to see some modded case for this that someone's created or some aluminium cases as well. Yeah, they're the cons basically, but the pros, I mean, I love the placement of the USB-C. It's very out the way and hidden. It's not right in the middle. Some people like it in the middle. I tend to like mine a bit further away or some have it on the side. I don't get that, that's weird. But because I play with the keyboard sort of 45 degree angle that is nice out the way for me if it's in the middle it sort of gets tangled so that's and again another personal preference the keys i've gotten used to the feel of these matte finish keys and to me i actually do like them they haven't lost any wear and tear they still look fantastic. They still have their nice red enter and escape key on there. They haven't lost color. I'm used to the profile now. I believe it's a cherry, if that's what they call it, where it sort of dips and like this way, but I'm used to it now. I, I know the keys. I've been playing a lot of CSGO 2 with this and my God, I have felt the difference in them slight movements. And it is crazy to think that you can notice something this minor. To a lot of people, pushing down a button is pushing down a button. But when you use something like this or the Wooten or the, I think it's an, a Polar 75 or Antic Polar, whatever they're called, any magnetic switch, you will notice. There is such a fast response compared to the standard. It doesn't sound a lot by pushing down a key, but just to be able to, just, just that simple little quick tap changes the way the game is played. You know, like Six Siege, if you were going left and right, you'd, it would take you a while. Even if you spammed, it would still, it would wait for the key to stop before it could restart when you've clicked it. So by the time you've actually clicked it, it's, you know, you've had to lift your foot, finger completely off. Where this, I could sit there queuing an E and with my fingers on both of them and it would be like this. It's next level. If you haven't tried a magnetic switch keyboard, definitely just pick one up, give it a go. You can always send them back if you're not happy with the product. That's obviously down to you as a person. If you don't feel the difference in the product or if you're just not happy with the performance or the quality, you can send a product back. It doesn't have to be broken, but I mean, you will not be sending this back. I can tell you that now. Once you've got it, it's a game changer. I get it. There's a lot of competition out there. There's the Wootin, this one. You've got other drunk deer keyboards out there, but this is the budget friendly one. Now, don't expect it to be heavy duty, unbreakable, waterproof, and all of these other features that some high-end keyboards have. This is your budget friendly keyboard, which doesn't come often. Not a lot of companies take tech that has been revolutionized and make it budget friendly. I haven't found a reason not to use this as my daily. Normally I only use keyboards like this for gaming or if I'm on the go, but majority of the time for my typing experience, so emailing, doing descriptions of videos and things like that, I'm using the Quirky Writer which is the big mechanical switch keyboard that is inspired by a typewriter. But I found myself actually using this way more for everything. So let's get into the conclusion of who this would be good for. Like I said, I use it for everything. So it is good for everyone. It's good for the college student. If you wanna take this in your backpack, it is lightweight. It doesn't weigh a lot. It's got a good weight to it, but it doesn't weigh stupid amounts. Slap that in a backpack, in it goes, bosh. Take it out, 
USB-C, plug it into your iPad, whatever, laptop, and it would work there and then, plug and play. The software is online to change all the activation points. So what does that tell you? You don't need to download more software on different platforms. Pair this up with a website around your friend's house and it will remember the keys. You've already got your, your keyboard set. Gamers, that's who it's originally made for. You know, the people that wanna get in competitive gaming. They've got an advantage, it's somewhat of a cheat, if you will. It works wonders. It gives you that fast accuration points for around the 80 pound mark, I believe this is. Don't hold me to it. Again, I will put a link to the product once it's released in the description when this video comes out. Because by the time this comes out, as I've had a good amount of time to play with this baby, the Kickstarter would have ended, so you can go and grab yours hopefully right now. Typing experience, it would work for someone in the office. Because it is so quick, if you're a fast typer, let me tell you right now, this, you're gonna be like Bruce Almighty when he's just going for it, because this will pick up every keystroke that you press. So if you are a silly fast typer, this will keep up. So yeah, it doesn't matter. This is for everyone and anyone. If you want it, there is a link in the description, go and check them out. Go over to Drunk Deer just to have a little look at whatever stuff they supply. And that's been the Drunk Deer G60. If you have any questions or you want to see it in action on any game let me know in the comments below we'll jump into some games and i can show you how this works within valorant csgo fortnite any game out there let me know and we'll jump on and do that but other than that if i haven't covered something that you wanted to know leave it in the comments and i will get back to you on that but other than that people capture create captivate this has been the drunk deer g60 and i'll see you all in the next video